Hello everyone and welcome to Symphony Preview on Helena Civic Television. My name is Cameron. I'm the Director of Development and Communications with the Helena Symphony and we are sitting down this morning with Maestro Alan R. Scott. Maestro, it's been a long summer away and there's so much that we have to talk about this morning, so thank you for taking the time. Jumping right in, season 67 launches in just a few days and we are opening our season with Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Can you talk to us a little bit about why you chose to program Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and the significance of it to our organization and to the world at large right now? Well, I think I'm not the only one programming this work. In fact, if we look at even just the last century, um, when World War II ended, World War I ended, the Berlin Wall came down after 9-11, 20 years ago, this work has been used to console and to bring people together since, since it premiered. Um, Beethoven crosses a whole new bridge with this work. The mere fact that he added words, singers, to a symphony, that was so odd to do that, to have words to a, I don't mean the, what we call an orchestra, but the actual form of music, a symphony. In all of Mozart's 41 symphonies, Haydn's 104 symphonies, no one ever dreamed of putting words because then it became no longer an autonomous language. It became something that had an explanation, a meaning. And he takes a poem that he loved by Friedrich Schiller. And this is a well-known poem. And it basically is suggesting, um, it uses the word Elysium, which is the Greek word for heaven. Um, but it, it talks about why why can't we, why shouldn't we, why don't we have heaven here on earth? Why don't we, why can't the city of man be equivalent to the city of God? Why can't we, he uses the word brothers a lot, bruder, over and over. And it's often referred to as this ode to joy, which is what the name of the poem is. This, um, why can't we all exist together? We have more alike than we do, and, and than we do not. And so, it's not just coming out of or still existing with this pandemic, but it's also about how this past year or even more has been times of social unrest, injustices, um, disagreements, political upheavals. That's very divisive, it seems, in any circle you go into. It's almost like even discussing politics is a taboo today. It wasn't always like that. And it's become more and more um, difficult to sort of exist with our neighbors if they dare think or be different. And that's, that's sort of, music sort of helps bridge those gaps. So it's several things. The Beethoven 9 um, is very much a battle. In fact, we don't even know what key it's in for the first 30 seconds. He goes back, it feels like it's D major, it could be D minor, it's an open fifth. We don't know the third degree of the scale of the chord until, until it decisively is in D minor. And it's interesting that Beethoven's of his nine symphonies, the two symphonies that are listed with minor keys, the fifth symphony in C minor and the ninth symphony in D minor, both end triumphantly major. Beethoven's saying something there that we overcome, we get um, through struggle with triumph. Um, but we need that struggle sometimes to have the triumph. And so, in this case, it's this mankind triumph, humankind triumph, where we have to triumph over a pandemic, over political upheaval, over social unrest, and we have to come together. So we're celebrating, in one sense, this ability of a community um, to still stay together as best we can, the ingenuity of these frontline workers and the endless work of, of what they did and they're doing, um, the ability to create a vaccine, the ability to do all these things that, that, that mankind um, can do when we work together. But it's also celebrating the fact that the Helena Symphony has not stopped performing. Whether it's been through the home stream, your Helena Symphony, with no audience. This will be the first time in a year and a half that we have an audience in the Civic Center with us. We had an audience at Symphony Under the Star, mm -hmm. 16,000 people. We had an audience of Benefit Concert in June. Um, but we will have an audience in the hall, and we're taking a lot of precautions to deal with that. Definitely. Well, and I think that what's interesting is Beethoven's Ninth, it's not just this concert. It carries through the entire season this desire to triumph and the struggles that all of us face. Can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek into what we have to look forward to beyond this first concert? Right, and we encourage people to buy season tickets because you're going to get, we're going to end the year with Carmen, mm -hmm. 
which is very much about this, 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 the femme fatale, as we call her, this strong woman who she knows she must die. Remember, operas are these fantastical stories, but she must die in order to through, truly be who she is, right? Don Jose murders her at the end. But um, we also have the Rite of Spring, perhaps one of the most aggressive, life-altering, music-altering pieces that changed the face of music. There's no other piece that changed music forever in the last 120 years since the Stravinsky's ballet, Rite of Spring. Um, and all of this music that we're doing, or I should say throughout the season, we have this sense of aggressively reclaiming mm -hmm. our lives. And that's, that's even on our brochure here, mm -hmm. reclaiming your life with music. Mm -hmm. So even the Christmas in the Cathedral's last work is titled, What is Peace? from mm -hmm. this larger work, it's a new work called Beatitudes from, for a Wounded World. And this idea that peace is not something that just happens naturally. You have to take it like you would, like war is mm -hmm. what the composer says. You have to aggressively pursue peace. You have to aggressively pursue to deliberately choose to come together. We have to choose. We chose during the pandemic to ensure that our music making was essential for this community and, and streamed all over the world and, 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 people, and people watched and experienced music making when they may have really truly needed it. And these works that we're doing, it's not just, you know, I often say, if you want to be entertained, go to the circus. We're not here to entertain. Music can be entertaining, certainly. But music, that's not why we exist. Mm -hmm. In fact, we changed our entire mission statement to engage and enrich and transform and inspire lives through music. We didn't say it had to be in a concert hall or how it, it's just through music. And that mm -hmm. could, that's such a broad reaching statement that we are here to truly impact people's lives. And so as we hope maybe slam the door shut on a, on a, on a difficult year or whatever, or break through into a new world, I want it this season to be somewhat aggressive. So Carmen is very aggressive. The Rite of Spring is perhaps the most aggressive piece there is. Beethoven 9, it's not this passive coddling. He's shoving this message down our throat. Right. It's brutal. It's brutal to sing. Um, there, is an, there is an angst about Beethoven. I often will say to the orchestra and chorus, when we're done, there should be blood on the floor. It's like throwing a piece of red bloody meat <laughs> on the floor. That's what Beethoven feels like. All of his music has this sense. It's not that there's not wonderfully beautiful moments. There are. Mm -hmm. But this is, but, but Beethoven's ninth is, he's shoving this message down our throats. Um, and I think we need it and we want it. This is one of the most popular pieces of music ever written. Definitely. Well, and I think that one thing that's very interesting about last season and then this season as well is it's been such transformational years for us as an organization and we continue to grow and we've hired new staff and we are really kind of pushing the boundaries on who we are as an organization and what it means for us to be accessible to not only our community but other communities around Montana and around the world. And last season, as many of you know, we were streaming online with Homestream Your Hell in a Symphony, and we're very excited that AARP will be partnering with us again, and that not only will we, we be welcoming audiences back to the concert hall, but also we will continue to stream. We will be streaming all six Masterworks concerts this season, as well as Mozart by Candlelight, so people across the world can again experience this incredibly transformational season with us. Um, and you know, part of that is our, one of our major priorities is making sure that our staff, musicians, and audience are safe. Do you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing this season to ensure the safety of everybody that loves our music as much as we do? Right, and I think it's worth, you know, there are dozens of concerts or nearly 20 concerts. The ones we'll be streaming are just the subscriptions. We still encourage people to come to the hall. It is safe to do so. And, um, they're not only going to get the live concert hall experience, they will get the stream on either side of the proscenium of the stage. Mm -hmm. um, they will be able to see what people are seeing at home, the inner workings of the orchestra and chorus throughout the performance, backstage footage and all sorts of things. So they'll get that too. But um, the other concerts, the, the children's concerts, the education concert series, the symphony kids, the youth concert, all of the non-series concerts, we encourage people to come to that. Christmas in the cathedral will sell out soon. Um, Mozart by Candlelight will certainly sell out soon. But what we're doing to make sure, we're, it's constantly in flux. We work regularly with the County Health Department. We follow the CDC guidelines. So right now, as we sit here at the beginning of the launch of the six, season 67, 
It is that the fact that the pandemic is still strongly going on, there are more and more people vaccinated, which is really great. And we and the symphony has a pretty strong stance that we encourage people to be vaccinated. However, in Montana, we can't mandate anything like most concert halls. You have to be vaccinated to go in the concert hall. We can't do that. So we have to still try to protect people and certainly the performers. So <clears throat> how we will do it is based on the transmission rate the day of the concert that it's in our county in the low, moderate, substantial, high. If it's low or moderate, mask are encouraged, but not mandatory. But if it's substantial or high, irrespective of vaccine status, you still, we would, we have to wear a mask in the hall as a, as a, a concert goer. Um, performers, however, will not be masked. Winds and brass singers, they really can't be. Strings could be, but there's, there's very little point. But what we're doing to one, make the, let the audience know how serious we are about this. We are rapid testing every performer before every rehearsal and certainly before the performance. We have spent tens of thousands of dollars, already nearly $30,000 just for the first half of the season mm -hmm. to have enough rapid tests before every single rehearsal. And they get tested before they even come into the, the hall, the concert hall, and they get tested. And this is with the performers, not the audience. The performers are rapid tested and um, to make sure that everyone on that stage has tested negative that day. Mm -hmm. So the audience can feel sh assured that we're taking it very seriously. That's the only way we really can do it um, because we can't have any sort of mandated vaccination right. policy. Frankly, we wish we could. Um, like Broadway is doing, the Metropolitan Opera, every other hall, audience and performers are to come into the building, you have to be vaccinated. You know, but um, right now it's in flux. Right now we're going by transmission rate and we'll, we, will, um, we, will, we will use that as our guidepost for right now. And CDC guidelines are constantly changing based on ad and adapting and we will mm -hmm. adapt with that. Definitely. Well, and let's just take a moment to talk about uh, subscriptions, how you can get access to these concerts. Homestream Your Helena Symphony will continue on the Helena Symphony's YouTube page. It is completely free to anybody who chooses to watch with us, no matter where you are in the world. And single ticket sales for all of our concerts, um, all of our Masterworks concerts are currently on sale. Single tickets for Mozart by Candlelight and Christmas in the Cathedral will be open to the general public the Monday after our first concert this year. Um, and which is September 18th. Yes, we which say. is September 18th at 7:30 at the Helena Civic Center, and we're incredibly excited to welcome everyone back to celebrate our frontline workers. And I just wanted to give a special shout out to the organizations and the people that have made this event possible: Browning, Kalazak, Barry, and Hoven for sponsoring this concert; St. Peter's Health for sponsoring our guest artists; Helena Town Car and DoubleTree for partnering with us on this concert; and finally, AARP Montana that has made Homestream your Helena Symphony possible. Um, and yeah, we're excited for an incredible season. Is there anything that you want no, to leave September us with September 18th, today? subscribers still get tons of perks. After the concert, there'll be a special opening night celebration of champagne and chocolates uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the ballroom. There's plenty of room to social distance there. We encourage people to have their mask available if this tr tr transmission rate is substantial or high. Right now it's very high. Um, and people can be safe. We encourage people to get vaccinated if it works for them. And we certainly um, encourage people to be a part of our music making, whether it be through the home stream, your Helena Symphony presented by AARP or in the hall. We really want people to, to realize how important our music making is for them and our community. Definitely. Well, and we are excited to welcome you back for season 67. Thank you so much, Maestro Scott. And we will see you at the concert hall in just a few days.